Hi everyone, this is Jarrett McKenzie, Senior Associate at Hensler Financial, welcoming you back for another edition of Planning Priorities. With another year quickly drawing to a close, our focus today will be on year-end financial planning items that should be included in each of our financial checklists to help ensure that we close out our year as optimally as possible. Now, I know it can be tempting to start shifting your focus to holiday and travel checklists, but before doing so, we encourage you to take a few moments and consider these time-sensitive items that will help you avoid to lose money you could have saved, paying for unnecessary penalties, or incurring taxes that may have otherwise been avoidable. It's important to begin by completing an assessment of our current situation and reviewing the things that we've accomplished throughout the year. For instance, have you met your savings goals? Did you pay off or reduce the debt that you made part of your New Year's resolution? Is your budget still intact? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you are certainly off to a great start. The next item on our list involves your health savings accounts more commonly known as HSAs. For 2019, individuals eligible for participation in high deductible health insurance plans can stock away as much as $3,500 before taxes. For families, this can be as much as $7,000. And for those of you age 55 or older, you get an additional $1,000 for a potential total contribution of $8,000. And when you consider the triple tax benefit that these plans can provide, such as setting aside tax-free dollars for health care, the ability to invest those same dollars and receive tax-free earnings on the growth, and then ultimately receiving tax-free withdrawals on qualified health care expenses, this item is a no-brainer for those of you eligible for participation. Another important and very meaningful consideration with a year-end deadline is something we refer to as tax loss harvesting, especially in years where you have a significant amount of capital gain, which has been realized in an after-tax account. It's generally a good idea to look for other investments in these accounts that may currently be trading at a loss. Assuming they're available, these investments can be sold at a loss and used to offset gains taken earlier in the year, which can effectively cause a decrease in your tax liability. In addition, up to $3,000 of available losses can be used to offset your ordinary income, and any excess losses can be carried forward to future years. Keep in mind, however, that there is a wash sale rule associated with these transactions, which could prevent you from being able to recognize these losses if you were to repurchase the security or one that is substantially similar to the one you sold within 30 days from that sale. The final consideration, and perhaps the most meaningful one for those of you who have reached age 70 and a half, is making sure that you have taken in full the required minimum distribution from each of your retirement accounts that have an annual requirement. This may include your traditional IRA, your rollover IRA, a SEP IRA, a 401k. Fortunately, Roth IRAs and after-tax accounts, such as a brokerage, do not carry such a requirement. The reason this item is so important is because it carries a 50% penalty for any part of the distribution that you failed to take prior to the end of the year in which it was required. So clearly this isn't something you want to go overlooked. And while most custodians will provide you with the amount of your RMD in the event that you are required to take one, our experts here at Hensler Financial will also be happy to assist you with this item and walk you through that calculation if you were ever in need. Thanks for watching this edition of Planning Priorities. I'm Jarrett McKenzie.